Hi, my name is Carmen LaGuecho, President and CEO of the Maryland Food Bank. I'm here today to talk to you about our continuing response to this ongoing pandemic, what we're calling Phase 2. At the Maryland Food Bank, we're ready to respond to any crisis, but COVID-19 has exceeded everyone's expectations. It's one thing to talk about living paycheck to paycheck, but when income disappears, literally overnight, trying to figure out how you're going to provide for yourself and your family becomes an ultimate priority. When COVID hit six months ago, people looked to the Maryland Food Bank to take action. The last six months have proved that the food assistance safety net that we've built over our 40 year existence has been able to stand up well to the first rounds of this crisis. That's all because of the financial support we received from you. That support has been nothing short of amazing. It's the silver lining that has come out of this crisis. Marylanders have shown up in a big way. By any metric imaginable, our impact over this period has been significant. Between our March and August, the Maryland Food Bank has distributed more than 31 million pounds of food. That's 97% increase over the same time last year. We've also had to buy a lot more food. Nearly $14 million have been spent during that time, a 400% increase over the same period a year ago. But what that done, that's done is allowed us to distribute 185,000 backup boxes. These are 30 pound box of food that we provide for a family of four for seven days. We've also distributed over 372,000 grab and go meals at various sites across central Maryland, as well as hosting over 2000 pantry and the go events in communities of need all across our state. But we have a lot of work ahead of us, not just in the 12 months ahead of us, but beyond. This kind of crisis lasts well after all the attention has gone away. Too many people will be slow to see the benefits of that recovery and will continue to need our help. And to talk more about what we're preparing to do in the coming months, I'd like to introduce Meg Kimmel, our Executive Pre Vice President of External Affairs and Programs. Thanks a lot, Carmen. So I wanted to talk a little bit now about how the Maryland Food Bank is preparing for the future. So because we know food banking really well, one of the things that we've done is that we reached out to experts in other fields. We talked to economists, we talked to public health experts and disaster response experts, and we asked them two things. One, what are you seeing? And two, what are you planning for? And what we heard over and over again, the synopsis of their guidance and advice to us was that this pandemic will disrupt the economy and suppress opportunity for months and years to come. So much like we did with our $12 million 90-day phase one plan, we're now working on what we're calling our COVID phase two plan, and that'll focus us on the next 12 months. And so part of that in our program work and the strategy that we'll do there, we're focusing on three new priority areas, uh, groups of people who are adversely impacted by COVID. And so the first group is newly unemployed Marylanders. We're looking at people who've lost their jobs, lost their wages, temporary job loss has become a permanent job loss. Uh, we're also focusing more intentionally on communities of color, not only to provide assistance today, but to begin to do more to address structural barriers to access for food. And then finally, folks who are homebound. So that might be people who are sick or quarantined or who can't leave their homes because they have underlying or predispositions to other disease. So one of the things that we'll do in terms of how we'll do this work is that we're going to continue to partner with local jurisdictions. We've done a lot of that during phase one. It's been very effective. We've been able to stretch resources and co-plan to meet demand that is continuing to grow. Maps, data, all of that's coming into play. And then what that does for us, it, allow, it will then allow us to deploy our resources to areas of highest need and new areas of need. So that's going to be critically important for us. And finally, we are going to, uh, as Carmen mentioned, those backup boxes, we're now in a position where we can improve the nutritional quality of those boxes. The program has been very effective. It's low touch, no touch. It's a good source of food. Now we're going to be able to focus on making those boxes more nutritious, even more nutritious than they were before. And so sometimes we'll even be able to part, uh, pair those up with produce boxes. It's a bit of a tongue twister. So um, we're excited about that work as well. So what will it take to make this happen? I think Carmen's going to share a little bit about that now. Thank you, Meg. So the good news is that phase two is off to a great start, thanks to the funds that we've raised to date. Dollars we received in the last fiscal year and so far this fiscal year that we're able to spend to meet current demand. But it won't be enough. We know this, need, we know this because the need is even greater than we're seeing today since government supports are no longer in place. We'll need to be there to fill that gap. And so we've set a goal for the next 12 months to raise 28 
million dollars. Now that may seem daunting, but to us, that seems very doable. This is what's needed if we're going to continue the high volume of work that's necessary to meet this increased demand. The demand of 83 million pounds each year that we're experiencing today with those government supports. But we're up for the challenge. The help to receive from many of you is proven that we can make an impact. I want to thank you for your incredible support during this unprecedented time. We appreciate your confidence in our organization and look forward to working together to help mariners in need. Thank you.